Uh, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we ask you to turn to the Gospel of John chapter 8. The Gospel of John chapter 8. We're going to read in verse 25. Uh, while you're turning there, uh, Sister Diane has put, put a card up here. And everybody, we encourage you to sign it. It's for a good love card for Jared's mother. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 8, beginning in verse 25. Gospel of John chapter 8, beginning in verse 25. The Bible says, Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that hath sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake of them of the Father. Then Jesus said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And he spake these words, and, excuse me, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for a church that will meet together in and around your word. Lord, we pray that you would honor your word that this morning, Lord, that you would touch our hearts, Lord, that you would show us the truth that you've had for us in this word, and that you've given from generation to generation. Lord, we thank you for the Bible that's laid before us, Lord, that it is the uh, Bible for English-speaking people in a day when that's been thrown to the wayside, Lord, we still claim this to be the truth. We pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we'll uh, be preaching this morning on the truth of the matter. Now, every situation, every circumstance that you can imagine to be in, there's truth involved. In other words, it is one way or the other. Now, when I was a boy and me and Judy would get into it, and we always would say the other one started it. And if mom could not make the right decision, she just whipped both of us. And that way she could be sure she got the right one. Now, the way it is with the Word of God is not so, because I can present you now the truth, and the truth is it's right here. It's in these uh, wonderful pages. And if you don't believe the truth, simply you don't believe God. Now, we live in a day and age where this is being thrown aside and people say, well, I think it means this or I think it means that and this is what it says to me and this is what it says to me. But let me tell you again, if you believe this book, within its own pages it says this, it is without private interpretation. Right. So it says what it says and you know what? It says it to every one of us. Amen. Now we can compromise if we wish, but when we compromise truth, you're not standing on much anymore. Remember how the Lord said on this, uh, that uh, considering uh, uh, the sand of the sea and the rock and how some built on sand? Well, if you don't believe this book and every word of this book, you're built on sand. Uh, you, you have no you have no fortitude to hold you up. And, and so we find then as we begin to look at truth, either you embrace it or you don't. You either take it, thus saith the Lord, to the to the very end, or you reject it all. You know, we can't pick and choose, can we? 
Either it's all the Word of God or none of it's the Word of God. And we live in a day and age today where people want to say uh, they want to take that big plum of grape, uh, of grace and just eat it up. But when it comes to daily living, they want to throw it to the side. You see what I'm saying? You can't do that and really believe the Word of God. It has to all be exactly what it says. And if it's not, we have nothing to stand on. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have not the Word of God to stand on if it is not true. Now, we live in a day and age where this book, and, and I just prayed about it because I would love it to be honored this morning, this is being thrown away. I mean, dear friends that I started in the ministry with 20 years ago, this is being rejected. They've taken in this ESV version and say it's more accurate. It say that it's a better interpretation. You know what? I reject that wholeheartedly. And if you do too, then you have to accept what this says. And if you can accept grace, you have to accept the rest of it. Now, you know, the Bible uh, says this, and I'll give you one example, and people have told me this for years, and I don't believe it. Um, the Bible says, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. I've hated him. I hated him from the beginning. He's not mine. He doesn't belong. And you know, when I preach that, some people will come up to me and say, you know, the, the uh, Greek translation of that is that he loved him less. Yeah. Well, you know what the Bible says to me? It says that he hated him. And you know, if you want to get in the brief translation, everything, the only thing I know is you've got to learn the whole thing. You can't pick out words in the Bible that you say, oh, the Greek translation is this, or the Hebrew translation is this. It's English or nothing. You, there, there's not anybody that I know that speaks Hebrew well. There's not anybody that I know that, spe that speaks Greek well. We have to embrace what we've got. And if we don't, we might as well throw the whole bag out. You see what I'm saying? And, and so as we begin to look at the Scripture and we begin to embrace it as truth, we have to take the whole bag or throw the whole bag away. There, there is no in-between. And, and so going back to our text in verse 25, Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Now, that's an undetermined, that, that's a never changing, that's a forever truth. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? And you know what? That's a revealed truth. You don't come to conclusion of whom Christ is on your own. That is a revealed truth. He opens up the door and you see him as the sinless son of God. You see him as the answer to all sin. You see him ever lovely and every good. When the door is open to your understanding, that's what will happen. Who is Christ? Is he son of God or is he not? Is he perfectly good or is he not? See, so you, you, you have to see that is a singular truth or you have to reject the whole bag, right? You know, uh, Russell-like people, can, uh, uh, if you want to call them that, Joe, Jared, just give me a good bag, a book on a, uh, about a, a Russell-like that came out of all that mess, uh, Jehovah Witness, if you want to call them, I won't give them that credibility. They're, they don't know anything about the Jehovah God. And, 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 and so he believed a lie for 30 years. And you know what the lie that they tell? That Jesus is not the Son of God. So he's beginning with this, who art thou? Who do you think he is? Do you really, really believe Christ was the very sinless Son of God, the very, the very God flesh? You know what? Uh, this is the thing that Russellite people don't believe. It says this, that, that Jesus, uh, that God came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He didn't take on this form like we think it is because see, if he did, there'd been sin attached. He came in the likeness. He looked like a man, 
but he was still the sinless son of God. And, and, and so we find then that as we look into what the Lord says, they, they make in one sense a fair question, who are you? What are you about? And they said unto him, who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, even the same, the exact individual, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. In other words, I've been telling you who I am from the very beginning of my ministry, I'm he. Verse 26, I have many things to say to you. I have many things to say and to judge of you. Now, let me... Uh, let me cut aside just for a minute and, and bring your memory to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And uh, remember, he said, he said to her very simply, I am he. Wasn't, you know, these big extraordinary things. He simply said, I am he. And she ran away from that well rejoicing, saying, come see a man that's told me everything that I've ever done. See, that, that, that's revealed truth. He, he, she saw him. So everybody that hears the gospel, and that's what he was saying here, everybody that hears, there's the Son of God. Listen, there's going to be some that don't believe, and you know why? Because their heart has never been opened. Listen, it's not a logic thing. It's not thinking about the Son of God. It's the revealed truth truth of the person of Christ. And so that's exactly what he was saying here. Who do you say that I am? And so then he begins, even the same that I said you uh, unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you. Now he wasn't going to say you're, you're mean, you're good. When you judge something, you look at who they are. You look at what they do. How do you know the Samaritan woman had got something real? She went around running, spreading the gospel. That's how she knew. That's how he knew it was real. Now, if you have no concern of lost souls, what's the first fruit of the Spirit? Love. Right? If you, have, if you have no concern over lost souls, I'd make my calling and election sure. You know, uh, we live in a day and age where a lot of supposed believers are snobby. They, they, they don't look with, at anyone with compassion or grace. In other words, uh, in, in, uh, in most situations, they look for a reason not to like somebody. You know what? That shows no love at all, does it? It doesn't show a love of the eternal destiny. It doesn't show a love of their, of their situation. In fact, it shows quite the opposite. And, and so we find there, he says, I want to judge some things in you. I, I, want, I want to make some, some statements about this. Then he says in verse 26, uh, I have many things to say to judge of you, but he that sent me is true and I speak to the word and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Now if you don't get anything else this morning you get verse 26 the word I speak is true. You can depend on it. If the Bible says it you can, you can rest your house on it. The word of God is true. And, and all of us say, yes, I believe it, until that one verse gets you the wrong way. And then we want a private interpretation, right? Mm -hmm. Then we want to know, oh, that's what it says to me. It may be what that says to you, but it doesn't say that to me. And we get back to a private interpretation, don't we? And, and, and so what we have to do is just take the word for exactly. And you know what? You begin to make people mad when you do this. Just like I've been, to, uh, I've been asking for four years. The Bible says in Acts to be baptized in the name of Jesus only. You know what? Besides referring me to another verse, nobody's ever told me anything about that. You see what I'm saying? Either you believe it or you don't. 
either you embrace truth or you reject truth. There, there, there's no, uh, there's no uh, in between road. There's no compromise to that. You can't do one and do the other at the same time. And so we find then that's exactly what Jesus was teaching. Verse, seven, uh, verse uh, 27, and they understood not that he spake to them of the Father. So they did not understand. And a lot of times we find ourselves in the same situation. Uh, verse 28, then said Jesus unto them, when you see the man, uh, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. So I want you to, to notice two things. First of all, he knew that he was going to be sacrificed. And secondly, he knew what they what the reaction. Remember when he was on the cross and they said, His blood be upon us. They knew exactly who he was. And he says, You'll see it in that day. You'll understand it then. And uh, the rest of that verse says, and uh, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father have taught me, I speak these things. And he, meaning the Father, has sent me, is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things which please him. Now, in, in, in verse number 29, I want you to see the Father is with me. He has not left me. But you know what? When sin came on the scene and he had to sacrifice himself for you and I, the Father withdrew himself, did he not? He, and he, my, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Remember that? It hadn't come yet, but it would. It would. And so we see that he says, when you're talking to me, you're talking to God. Verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. In other words, they saw him as Christ. They saw him as the answer to sin. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now, I want you to see that Baptists don't like if statements, do we? We don't like those statements that require something after it. But I want you to say, if you continue in my word. Now, I ain't going to get into names, but me and Donna, uh, uh, when I was pastor in South Road Baptist Church, there was a man that we both knew even prior to then that started attending. And you know what? He hadn't been in the Lord's house in a long time and he left pretty quickly. My question is this, did he continue? And I'd have to say no, right? I'd have to say no, that's not true. And, and so since he didn't continue, the only kind of thing I can come to is he never had anything to start with. So this morning, while we claim the grace holy and, and, and we know salvation is completely of grace, listen, salvation always, always yields works. And if there are no works, if there is no clinging unto Christ, if there's no giving up this world for the world to come, I have no confidence whatsoever. And, and, and so we find then that this, uh, that the Lord Jesus says, yeah, you're saved if you continue in my word. See, the word's precious, and we have to embrace it, don't we? The word is precious. It comes on from Christ, and we have to embrace it. So when we violate the word of God, we're not embracing it, are we? We're not cherishing it. We're not loving it in the way that we should. Then, and... Uh, Verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, singular, and the truth, singular, shall make you free. Do you want to be free from this world this morning? Do you want to free from, be free from the nagging of this flesh, how it disables us, how it hinders us in the things of Christ? Do you want to be free from it? Listen to the truth. Give yourself wholly to the truth. And if the truth is there, embrace it and love it. 
And if you do, this world, this world won't bother you as much. Right. And, and so we, if we're going to do that, we have to know what the truth is, do we not? And, and, and these pages are chucked full of truth. We don't need commentaries. Commentaries is fine, but see, when you begin to look at them more than you look at this, there's been a problem. You see what I'm saying? This is what we need. If the Bible says it, then that's exactly uh, what it says. Now, go with me to the Gospel of Luke. And again, not a lot of people want to embrace this. Not a, pe a lot of people want to love this. But it should be the direction of the things that we do. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, uh, excuse me, chapter 14, verse 25. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verse 25. The Bible says this. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them. Now, I want you to see he has this, uh, uh, this barrage of people following him. Now, I think in some sense they were following the flesh. See, Christ was an interesting fellow, was he not? Now, outside his spiritual being as the God-man, here's a man that grew up as a carpenter with no education that, that read the scriptures fluently, that quoted them fluently. And see, that creates an interest in the mind of God. You know all this foolishness today with all these laser light shows and people screaming and, and singing what sounds like to me rock music from the 80s and maybe a little change with the words. You know what? That's enticing, isn't it? That's enticing to the flesh. And you come to an old-fashioned Baptist church and we have a little piano and still singing old hymns. You know, that's not enticing to a lot of people. And it's never enticing to the flesh. And so we find then, we find then that this huge barrage of people was following him but what was the sincerity that was behind him? So Jesus looks around and sees this huge amount of people following him. And he says this, If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, I want you to see what he told them was rough. What he, he told them was hard. But if any interference comes from people, you let it go. Now, we're here in the South and ain't nothing. You know, we don't say mother, we say mama. And if your mama interferes, the Bible says you're supposed to hate her. Anything that interferes with your relationship with Christ, you're supposed to hate it. Now, I don't remember this because he's done old when I came along, but uh, Billy Graham, you know what? They were just like Kenny Penny on him. If they said the sky was falling, they'd start looking up. But you know what? He had a lot to lie about. He, he, you know what, when all those crusades and you see them thousands coming down, you know what they would do? Uh, they'd say, what's your background? Presbyterian, you need to go right over there. What's your background? Pentecostal, okay, you need to go right up here. That's right. See, there's no truth in that, is it? None whatsoever. And so we find then what he was saying was pretty harsh. Do you hate the interference of people that will not serve God. Do you hate the interference of people giving you another idea, questioning this book? Are you sure that's what it says? He says, that's a type you need to hate. And verse 27, And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. Now, we know that a cross is awkward and heavy to bear, and we know that it's individual, and ladies, just because it says his, 
don't mean that you don't have one too. His is just a possessive term that can go to anybody. So I have mine. You have yours. You know, some people were saying, you know what? Uh, I couldn't stand it if my health was like yours. Well, the only kind of thing I can say, well, that's my cross to bear, and all I can do is pick it up and go with it. You see what I'm saying? And that's in and, and there's there's crosses that I don't have, and I'm very thankful for it. But every one of us has our own. And if you're going to serve him, you pick it up. Now, again, we live in a, uh, a day and age today where people are saying, you just love Christ and you'll have more money than, uh, than an owl has feathers. Well, this is the, not the truth. And you know what? This is what I, I've often wondered about. You know, very frequently they do. So where does that come from? It doesn't come from Christ, does it? So uh, there is something supporting false doctrine in our age. Just be very careful of it. And, and, and so we find then that he says, listen, if you're going to follow me, it's going to be rough. If you're going to follow me, it's going to be difficult. If you're going to follow me, it's going to be hard. Listen, it's not none of this, woo-hoo, this is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. No, it's picking up a cross and bearing it the rest of your life. That's following Christ according to the scriptures. Verse 28, he said, you better think it out. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it? Now, everybody always talks about money here, and if you're going to build a house, you're going to build a church. No, no, no. That, that's not what it's talking about. Somebody that will tell you the truth will tell you this. It's a rough, difficult and you better will be sure that's what you want. You don't hear that, do you? I've never heard that among God's people, have you? But it's the truth. That's what I have found after 32 years of sincerely trying uh, to serve my Lord in the flesh, it's rough. But in the spirit, what a wonderful, glorious thing. How in the times of you consider quitting and giving up, how the Holy Ghost comes by and says, listen, it is well. All things are good. But that's in the spirit. In the yeah. flesh, it's been rough. Yeah. It's been rough. And, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, he, he says, listen, if you, if you don't have the real deal, if you're not ready for a hardship time, no, don't pick it up to start with. Verse 29, Thus happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, that behold, it began to mock him. In other words, think about how good the Lord was us to, to get this building. But Y'all remember, this basement is about three blocks higher than the average basement because the hill was so steep. And uh, I think if I remember right, it's 18 blocks high. Wonder if today all it was was the basement and people going by and look, look at those foolish people. They're still meeting down there in the storefront. See, it'd been, it'd been a mockery, wouldn't it? Now, in the very same way, what about starting for Christ and giving up? Listen, I, I, it's just like that fellow I was just thinking of down at Southbrook. You know what his life has been unto Christ a mockery. And this was so stupid, it was supposed to have been a preacher. His life has been a mockery under the cause of Christ. And every time you pass, and just and, and next time y'all have, if you venture into Houston County, I'll give you an example. When you're going into Houston County, you'll pass, and, and instead of going down to Warden Sister Joanne's house, go straight, what we call out on the bridge, and there'll be there'll be a uh, Baptist church on your right, and then start looking to your left, and you'll find a basement that's been there ever since I can remember. 
and we started going over there when I was about this high. So for at least 47 years, it sat there incomplete. That's the life that's a mockery unto Christ. That's the life that has no reality. And so he says, if you're going to follow me, stick to the truth, lest happening, you put it down and you quit, and then you become a mockery. <laughs> Verse 30, saying, this man began to build, and he is not able to finish. Or <laughs> what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he is able uh, with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while, while the other is yet a great way off and sendeth an ambassages and desired conditions of peace. So likewise, he, he be of you that forsaketh not all he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So you have to give it all up. That is the truth. So uh, do you embrace the truth this morning? Gospel of John, chapter 6. Gospel of John, chapter 6, in verse 44. Gospel of John, chapter 6, in verse 44, the Bible says this, No man come, come unto me except the Father which hath sent me, Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, see, this is this is unequivocally. It's like me uh, talking to a couple of fellows yesterday. Listen, if the drawing is not there, simply all I can tell you is you're not saved. And you know what? That's very hard to embrace, isn't it? Especially if you've been taught, other, taught otherwise, where you bring down these youngins and you go this, this, and run down the Romans road. But listen, you know what? Simply that's not true. When you get down to it, if he's not drawing, you're still lost. And you know what? That's a hard truth to embrace, is it not? Amen. Because you know what? This old stinking flesh, you know what you always want to say? Well, that's not fair. Yeah. Right? And to this flesh, it's not. But you know what? That's the Word of God. And we have to embrace it just like we have to embrace for God to love the world, right? They're both accurate. They're both true. And we have to embrace both. And, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, some of these truths that's hard against the flesh, it's very difficult to embrace them, but we cannot pick and choose. We can't say, oh, I like this one, but I don't like this one. The little book of Hebrews, I believe Paul to be the writer, he was writing the church to back to Jerusalem, but that's just my idea. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse 3. Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse 3, the Bible says this. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3, the Bible says this. But in those, meaning the sacrifices of the Jew, but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance made again of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats uh, should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh unto the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it's written of me. Do thy will, O God. And so he rejects everything the Jew has learned to depend on. There is no sacrifice. You know what? My Catholic friends, when they run down here and, and, and they get their little dab of wine and they get that little cracker thrown in their mouth, you know what they leave with there? Nothing. They leave with a little cracker and a little wine and that's all they leave with. See, that's not a very popular teaching today, is it? And listen, as the world begins to embrace new things, it's going to be a lot less popular. That's why you better pick up your cross and be sure that you have what you think you have 
and, and, and understands to embrace the truth like we should. Uh, 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians, this is one that a lot of people don't like. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. First Corinthians 11, verse 13, the Bible says this, Judging yourselves, is it comely that a woman should pray unto God uncovered? Doeth not nature itself teach you that, it, that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Does nature not teach that? Now sometimes I wonder, because we certainly do uh, things against nature. And I've said this millions of times, I said again, my hair was like down to here. One person had longer hair than me is a boy that I knew was Eric. And, and his was about down to here. And you know what the Bible says? That's a shame. That that is that and, and listen, you know what? I've heard mockery people say, well, there's a lot of things. It's a shame. No, it's a shame unto your profession. It's a shame that you do that and say that you've trusted God. It is a shame. It's an open mockery. Now, among our group, that's uh that's very well accepted, is it not? By and large, you don't see me doing anything else, do you? But, let's finish that now. Verse 15, But if a woman have long hair, it is glory to her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. Now you think about that. How many women are covering up much today. You know, I wish I could say, oh, the right length is here. I can't. But I can say this, it's long. It's long. It's long. It's long. People don't like that, do they? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is the sad truth. Most people think it's pretty costly. No, it's good Bible doctrine. And it's difficult on the flesh, is it not? Both ways it's difficult on the flesh. When my hair was long, it looked very much like Sarah's. Pretty dark brown hair. But it just wasn't mine to have. You see what I'm saying? And it's appealing to the flesh. It really is. But you know, I had a couple opportunities after that. Saw some of my old friends. Uh, I had a friend named Steve. He, he was killed in a car accident. And I, I, he had a rat tail down where he lived. About down to here, about his mid back. And he, uh, that's one of those strip of long hair that's longer than the rest. And he joined the Navy. And he had to have it all cut off, as all good Navy sailors do. And he came back from the Navy, and Donna and I had married while he was gone. And he came back, and he said, did you join the service? And I said, no, I just saw what the Bible teached. And I saw what the Bible was teaching me, and I had that mess cut off. And he looked at me like I had three heads. But you see what it, the difference when you begin to embrace the Bible? The world's not going to like it. The world's not going to be pleased with you. You're not going to get much pats on the back. But think of the glory of God. When these hard, hard truths come by, you embrace them just as until you were going to embrace Christ. Uh, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. And, and so we see that it goes beyond being just a simple custom. Now, I'm going to give you, you know, you can't preach uh, and rip hide hair and all without giving you a little sugar stick, too. That came from Wayne Adams, so I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is a wonderful truth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. The Bible says, 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, meaning dead. <laughs> you know, uh, for a while in my early ministry, I only thought I was going to preach funerals. I thought that's what God pushed, placed me in the ministry. I worked over here at the nursing home, and I don't know if they liked me or if they didn't have a pastor involved in their lives anymore. <laughs> But I was getting an uh, opportunity to preach a lot of funerals. And I very frequently would read this verse because whatever, what other hope do I have to offer them? Right? You know, when you're dead, you're dead. There's no coming back. When you're dead, you're dead. And so these people, uh, David out there uh, in the cemetery, you know what? I'm just waiting for the day. I don't know if David was saved or not. He told me he was. But I'm just waiting for the day. Just think what a wonderful thing that would be if we were here when the Lord returned and we saw David go up a little bit before we did. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm chomping at the bit. And then we, which are alive and remain and to the coming of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. What a wonderful, wonderful time. Man, I look forward to that truth. I embrace it wholeheartedly. A lot of people today say, well, this has already happened. It happened in 70 AD. That's not what I believe according to this because, see, this letter was written after 70 AD. So why would he be encouraging him with something that already happened, Right? So he says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel, which I am assuming is Gabriel or Michael, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What a wonderful truth. I believe that. Just, you know, you know why uh, I like uh, driving to work. One of the reasons is I, I'm always driving to the east, Clarksville's east and south of here. And I'm thinking, you know what? This could be the day. What if I'm driving my red truck and the skies just part open, and I just go up with it? See, if we don't believe that, we don't believe none of it. I believe in a literal resurrection of the dead and I believe a literal catching away of God's people. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to put this thing aside this morning never have to worry about being at the nursing home any time again. Never worry again about is the bank statement going to come out like I hope it does. Never ever again to have to worry about anything. I can't imagine it. But I know it's going to happen. That's a wonderful truth, isn't it? What truths of the Bible do you believe? Do you believe it all, or do you believe it some? See, I believe it all this morning. From Genesis to Revelation, I believe every one of it. Do you? That would be the biggest question.